Hi everybody, my name is Scott Walls. I am the Oracle Cloud Source to Settle and OBN expert here at Panamere. For over 25 years, I've deployed Oracle applications for some of the world's largest organizations. You're watching a functionality overview video. In this video, I discuss contract conversion tips and tricks in Oracle Cloud. This functionality occurs within the contract management functional area. Click the link above to watch a quick video explaining contract management that functional area. Okay, I'm gonna use the following six slides to explain this topic. What makes contract conversions unique? Terms template decision, the terms and template normalizations, contract parties decision, tracking spend decision, and then I'll give you how we handle the hardest decision and maybe some help on one way to solve this. Best of all, I'm gonna do this in less than five minutes. So let's get started. Okay, slide one. So what makes the contract conversion unique? Well, in short, it's the complexity. Contracts are linked to more data elements, multiple of which need to be converted first. So like I said, POs are typically the hardest conversion for similar reasons, and then think contracts can link to more sets of data, to other contracts, to other PDF contract documents. Lastly, let's talk about those documents. They might be on a share drive. They might be in a different format. They may not have inheritance that the master owns this sub document in a purchase contract. They might be in other applications. They might even be in multiple other applications and on shared drives. But don't worry, I'm going to walk you through the complexities and I'm going to tell you how to handle them at the end of this presentation. That's my teaser. So if you have specific questions and you probably will, please feel free to reach out to me directly. Okay. Oh yeah. And you need to know the contracts application first. So click the link above to watch a video explaining that contracts application. All right. Slide two terms, template decision. Look, there's two options here, but it's super important. Simplify. This is really simple. Oracle just looks at this thing like it's been authored in another system. It's what they call a contract document. It's similar to what you'd expect supplier paper to look like. So there's no individual clauses, uh, but that complexity, uh, it, the good thing is the complexity is gone, but the functionality is also gone. So it's really like having a Word document template on a shared drive. So you can deploy it very quickly and very easily. And then of course, very cheaply. Now, the opposite of that, is a structured template. That's where you have the sections, the clauses, the complexity, but you have the functionality. So reporting, clauses, deliverables, rules, expert functionality, and much more. So that's good, but it comes at a cost. Pro tip, I've seen a lot of clients, most all of them, they get excited about this functionality, but honestly, they very rarely use all or sometimes any of it. And I'd say 30% of the customers they give up during the standardization process and they start looking at all these clauses and how we're going to get legal in and who owns the clauses. And they say, you know what, let's basically reinstitute using a simplified template Word documents on a share drive. And you can do that. In fact, if you don't have a need for that complexity, don't deploy it. it just cost money. Now, click the link above to watch a video explaining how to standardize the contract documents prior to your conversion. OK, slide three, terms and template normalization. For any number of reasons, contract terms and templates often differ within organizations. In fact, much of the value of cloud installs in general is going back and cleaning data and business processes. In this example, I'm just gonna show you two lines of business and how they have different terms and processes in relation to using what we call a master contract to govern all their purchase contracts, think like an SOW. So line of business number one uses what we'll call a perpetual master contract. This was agreed to during the onboarding process and it, it is, maybe it's negotiated every two years, but it may never be negotiated. It handles all the constant elements of a buyer supplier relationship. Now, these are usually created during the supplier registration. So click the link above to watch a quick video explaining the supplier registration application in Oracle Cloud. Okay, now line of business number two, they chose not to use a master contract. So everything is period of performance and everything is negotiated for every different instance of a contract. So maybe sometimes that works or is appropriate and sometimes it isn't, but you'd have to go through and look at your documents and your processes, review them, and just make sure should these be normalized. Okay, so slide four. Now we'll talk for a minute about contract parties. Internal and external contract parties are often essential to establishing ownership of a contract and auditability. Think about signatures and who signed, etc. But those individuals, especially for suppliers, are no longer employed or, or certainly aren't in the same role. So whether it's internal or external, they may not be converted. So you're going to need to have a plan for how do you deal with that. Okay, now next, slide five, tracking spend. 
So there aren't a ton of organizations that are very good about tracking contract spend, even though that is the premise of deploying procurement, it's the value creator or one of. So you have to ask yourself, are you going, are you tracking spend today? And then are you going to track spend tomorrow? And is that only for go forward or how will converted look? So that can get confusing. Converting documents does not mean converting the agreement. So when you look at this diagram and you go right to left, spend is a bit of a misnomer. You don't track spend, you track orders. So the orders roll into the agreements which roll into the contract lines. So think about it logically, you need to have all of those. And then the dirty word, you need to determine what the open balance is. So it just gets a little bit complicated. Now, you can click the link above to watch a video explaining more about how spend is tracked in Oracle Cloud if you don't already know. Slide six, so what do we do? Well, every situation and every client is different, um, but you wanna at least consider, and I've had clients do this for over 4,000 contracts, manually re-entering the contracts and creating the lading agreements and orders. Usually there's a group of buyers and contract admins, maybe you have legal, but the advantage here is sometimes they determine what is open balance differently. Sometimes they handle contracts differently. And so your organization has to decide what the relationship to legal is and then how autonomous the contract admins or the reps for legal inside procurement, how autonomous they are. Do they act the same? Are they consistent? Are they unified and standardized? And so sometimes allowing those individuals to re-enter their own contracts, whether they do it all in the beginning, whether they do it as they go, this is just one option to consider. And it seems heretical, but I have seen it done just because you have to realize how complex the contract conversion is. Okay, so this is the end of this presentation, but hopefully it's just the beginning of your Panamere journey. Did you know that there are thousands of free videos just like this one on Panamere.com? and hundreds more on Panamere's YouTube channel. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Remember, better content, better skills, better income, better life. Panamere wants to help you get 1% better every day. Thank you for watching and have a great day.